Am I elitist and snobbish? Um, <laughs> somebody was talking about this this morning. I, 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 I want to cut, cut straight through this. The, the first thing is I'm anti-elitist. Elitist is not um, the definition that is used. Um, what do I mean? Well, elitist for me is actually had somebody with a higher ability and wealth, etc. But it comes from a combination. You cannot call somebody like the Kardashians elitist. I, I can't even discuss how vile I see those people. <laughs> but um, I am not for that in the separation of people um, through society. If you've covered, if you listen to my stuff relating to how the top of Carillion work and how things overlap into other businesses and government and other things, that is an elitist circle where they give jobs to each other. Um, I'm against all that because you're ending up with a layer of idiots because they're not employed because they're smart, they're not employed because they're the best person for the job, they're employed because their brother works there or they, they were promised a job if they gave a contract to somebody else and you know it's pure corruption. Um, so no I'm not elitist. Am I snobbish? No. Um, this come up relating to the poor girls in the Philippines. I'm just a, I'm just very analytical. So the point being is, if you go through a process of elimination, which most people should do, which often don't, you can recognize the where, if you're looking for a relationship, where your best opportunities will be that are going to be longer lasting. Um, and if you don't believe me, that's fine. At the end of the day, I'm not here to dictate what you do with your life. I just don't want to hear people whining about it when it goes wrong. Um, that's why I say, you know, be more choosy, take your time. A lot of the people have come from a bad environment, they're uneducated, etc., etc. Um, all these things are quite simply not being snobbish but recognizing the compatibility issues are going to be far more difficult at that level compared to somebody that say um, was a nurse in Dubai for 10 years or Hong Kong or um, worked in Australia for 10 years and you know, I'm just saying from a Filipino point of view that has an understanding of wealth, an understanding of the commitments and value of money, understanding Western society, understanding a broader reach beyond their local town, village, or daytime television. That's the difference on that. Now, if you ask me the same thing about Spain, I don't mix with the majority of Brits here, not because I dislike Brits or whatever, but I didn't move to Spain to live amongst Brits. Um, I do have issue with some of the Spanish where we are right now, but that's the area we're in. At the end of the day, we're moving from here. I'm not sitting there dictating that they should change whatever, we'll just move out of it. Um, but at the same time, it's the sort of stuff that would irritate most people. So it's not a case of being snobbish, it's just like, um, some people can be undesirable in the sense of the way they act, the way they do things guys downstairs being drunks, for example. Um, well, yeah, they're drunks. They're, you know, bashing around at three o'clock in the morning. I can't be bothered with. Don't need the hassle. You know, there's a certain point, as you get older, you get less tolerant to this garbage. You don't need it. And somebody having a argument once, once every couple of months is fine. But when it starts getting to nearly every week, it's an issue. <laughs> um, so it's not snobbish, it's not elitist, it's analytical and at the end of the day a lot of people do not recognize how things affect them beyond that little thing you know if you're, if you're I mean I'm, here for example we take the guys downstairs so like say it's 11 o'clock on a Saturday, Saturday night you can hear them banging around you're expecting at three o'clock in the morning to hear the get the metal gate slam and them shouting, swearing words in the street and being abusive and stuff. So between eleven and three, it may actually disrupt the rest of your evening.
very easily. You may find that when they do bang around, you don't sleep properly that night, so then it rolls into the next day. That's not being snobbish, that is recognising that other people are impacting your life, and as such, you've got to do something about that stuff. A lot of people don't. Um, there's a couple of friends of mine having some problems with uh, some neighbours elsewhere, and quite simply, there's two ways I would deal with it. Either you've got to nip it in the bud and just say, look, let's just move past this, we'll just put a line in the sand and just say, look, we don't have to talk to each other, we just don't engage with each other, whatever you have to do uh, to get it to the point where you're no longer arguing with the neighbours. Or you move. There is no win scenario. There is no win. And this is where people often go wrong, is they assume that one person's got to outdo the other. And it goes backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And do you know what? You're both losing. Nobody's winning. You're disrupting each other's lives. You're disrupting your your partner's lives as well. And on top of that, you're you're making the environment that should be your stable, happy environment the most disruptive environment that you have. Your home should be a place of sanctuary, um, quiet space, happiness, content, and a life that you should be able to enjoy in the comfort of your space. If you're creating these things around you, and I, I will say creating, because if you're doing tit for tat, you're creating, whether you like it or not. It's more important to be the better person and it's quite simply shut that off where you can. Whether you go down and just tell them to, look, we'll just call it a day, or you simply move. There's nothing wrong with it. You're not losing anything. What you're actually doing is giving yourself back your space. You're giving a stress reliever to your partner as well. Because at the end of the day, if you're arguing with a neighbor, you're affecting them. You're affecting the home. The neighbor's affecting the home as well. But you're both doing it. Um, and that's why it's important. I mean, I remember working for a, a foreman who was doing, constructing some apartments in Worcester years ago. And the guy didn't have a TV. He was a religious guy. And his son was actually out in uh, Papua New Guinea uh, building bridges. Um, but he was a very funny guy because he wouldn't allow swearing on the construction yeah. site and things like that. A very peculiar guy. But the, the reason he didn't have a TV because he said it invited uh, evil into his house and stuff. But... He was content and happy, although his world was a bit strange for me, but he was content and happy. There's nothing wrong with that. At the end of the day, he, he's impacting, <laughs> impacting on the construction site by stopping people swearing. Uh, but beyond that, it's not, not really a problem beyond builders trying to not to swear, which often can make them swear more, which is even more funny. Um, but the, the point being is, is recognizing that you're inviting some of this stuff into your home. And the reason this goes all the way back to the beginning, relating to what I was talking about with girls from a poor background, especially within webcam stuff and things like that, is they already have a lot of issues, whether people like it or not, or will justify it, or, you know, it's, everyone's the same in the world, yeah. Yeah. Hitler and Stalin, put them on top of your lists. You can put a few others on there as well, how you'll change them into better people. Um, but the, the point being is, you need to recognize that, firstly, there is more risks with going with different people from different environments, um, but, uh, you know, compared to others. And also recognize that you don't need to invite it in. We do not need to invite somebody into your life that has a lot of problems. You're not saving them, and a lot of time they will not see it as you saving them. They see it as an opportunity a lot of the time. And like I said, I'm not interested in arguing about it. If you think that you're the saviour of somebody else, and, and a lot of the stuff that is going on is just because of this and that, you will justify everything for yourself anyway. So I'm not arguing with you, it, with you on it. I'll just leave you to it. But that's the reason my personal view on it is... Um, but no, I'm not snobbish. I'm analytical. I, I analyze everything. It's part and parcel of who I am. Thanks for watching.